Now, the rest of the story. All right, welcome back to the rest of the story. Now, the 76 is still sitting out. Truck is sitting in the shed. I put everything else away. And it seems like we have an awful lot of space in here right now, but that is not really the case. Uh, we start tucking everything way back inside. Uh, she'll start to fill up again. I got a bunch of stuff down at my place that's that needs to be put inside, but that's actually where I'm headed. That's why the truck's sitting in here. That's why the tether is sitting here. Uh, that's why the 76 is outside because I threw the grease gun and a bunch of parts. And I gotta go down. I gotta either flip or change all the blades on the disc spine because I cut for about nine hours the other day and they're looking kind of rough. Now, to address the question as to why our, our blades get so worn down like they do, it's largely because I don't know if it's being portrayed properly to everyone. When we go and cut, first cut, second cut, third cut, we aren't, I don't think we do anymore, we aren't just cutting field ground. We aren't just cutting the contours where it lays nice and flat and there aren't any obstacles to cut around. Uh, we also cut pastures, we cut waterways, and really those blades, you they get worn down really just from hitting the dirt. Now our disc bind has the hydraulic cylinder on the, the tilt for the cutter bar. And I usually try to avoid dropping it down all the way, especially when we're in the waterways and I'm doing the pasture ground. I've done the pastures enough to this point that I don't typically hit anything. The biggest problem is just you catch dirt because when the grass is chest high, you don't necessarily see all of gopher holes or ditches or if you're going around the field the first time for the year when you got dirt that you flung out into the hay field from the disc or the chisel plow. Um, dirt is really abrasive. Uh, it's not very often. We do hit some rocks. I don't really catch hardly anything as far as sticks, cutting the pastures or anything else like that. I mean, they're, they're pretty well picked up. But um, we do typically, after every like decent day of cutting, we do go through and change our blades over or change them out. I've kind of, it's kind of getting to that point where if it's, it's too rough, I just almost swap it out. Um, the place where I'm going after this, it's, first cutting and there's a lot of ground on there I got to cut I'd say there's probably around 80 acres I mean I've never actually ran the the GPS unit around it so I don't know what it is for sure uh, but it's some really tall heavy stuff and I do know that the blades need to be pretty sharp because uh, by the end of the day they're going to be pretty well shot I do know that now where I'm going, um, the weather really has to cooperate. We're getting rain right now. It's a nice little sprinkler. You can see out here where the 76 was sitting earlier today. And this is the kind of rain that I wish we were getting more in like July and not even June. Even just the light dust settlers because it really isn't soaking in. It's really not doing all that hay that Ryan went through and tedded a whole lot of good. But as long as it's not like really pounding heavy rain, I think we'll be okay. I really don't want to have to go through and re-ted it. I mean, that's just fuel being burnt. The clouds are starting to clear up. You can see the sunset. So, oh, you can also see that our sheds are pretty well empty as far as our, our hay sheds up here. Down at my place, Ryan's place is full, but we have, I want to say 140, 150 acres that we have to actually make for, make for third crop. Um, everything that I've cut in, that I had cut just the other day here, that was some really heavy, some really nice looking stuff. And that really should add up really nice. They're calling for a colder than average winter. Plus, we're not entirely sure how many cattle are going to be on the farm going into this fall. So I'd rather 
have more feed than what we think we need and then if we have more than necessary going into next year i guess we got a good baseline as to what we should be should be aiming for the uh tether did need a little bit of work i don't it's not really the tether's fault but i took the tire over and had it worked on uh, ryan somehow managed to get a a pinhole on the face of this tire here i thought he like just broke the bead or something um, but all it was was just a tiny tiny little hit i don't know if it was a nettle or not a nettle a locust needle or even a a stick of some sort but that's a cheap fix the 7600 that was about 350 bucks the michelin tube plus the uh, patch that they put on the inside of the tire it actually works really good we ran it two days so far and quick thing to address why don't we use the mirrors i do use the mirrors i adjust the mirrors all the time the only problem is that one's kind of a pain to get to because i need a ladder to get to it and i don't always have a step ladder here i do right now um, to adjust it and the same thing with this one I can get out and adjust it on the, the steps all the time, but we were cutting brush with it last, and one of the waterways that we're, I cut, I know Ryan didn't adjust them when he went out to, to Ted the stuff, uh, but one of the waterways, it got a little bit close to the trees, or a tree limb actually just grew out into the field, and I caught it, and it didn't hurt it or anything, but those things are kind of a pain. They're nice. They're really nice when I'm hauling grain in the fall or you're doing a lot of roading, um, especially even doing round bales so you can actually see what's going on behind you. But um, yeah, seems like they're always folded back when I got the camera on. The combine, I'm getting tired of talking about the combine, but it's getting done. The last big, big job that it needs and it's actually not gonna be that bad. I know it's not going to be that bad because the worst part was doing the vertical auger but we got to go through we got to pull the cap off the boot off and actually pull that auger out and replace the inner one it's kind of tempting um because i do know they do it you can get the newer boot like they have on like the 70 series where it kind of comes out and kind of throws it a little bit more uh one of, going and like pricing out one of those would be kind of tempting but i mean not much point when this thing is perfectly fine I mean, that's just throwing your money away um, the front augers are done I don't know where I got it from I always call them shoe augers if it's not the right term oh well uh, you go around the world enough you start to find a lot of slang terms I've seen it plenty of times on here where people comment well no that's not what we call it we call it this we call it that uh, corn fodder some people call them corn stalk bales some people call it cor I call it corn fodder bales um, a lot of different like pieces and parts and pieces on the machinery depending on where you're at and what you're doing or the hardware that holds them together everyone depending on where you're at calls them different things I don't know if I picked it up on my internship or if I picked it up at college I call them shoe augers to me that's what they are the term seems to fit for me and when I talk about them, everybody seems to understand what I'm talking about. And hopefully we're done working on them. Uh, the bearings actually on the front end were replaced two years ago in season. Dad went through, as you guys saw on that live stream, put new bearings, the flanges are the same, and we touched up the auger flighting on a couple of the augers. And they're really not worn too bad, it just they had cracks in them. I don't know if it's just from vibration or what, but the actual flighting itself is fine. So, not too worried about that. We're all ready, including Calvin here, to be done looking at this combine. We're ready to at least get it in the machine shed and parked off to the side and done. Uh, the plan is, once we get the, the new chains on and everything, I'm going to go through. I do want to wash it off. i got to change the engine oil, change all the filters, clean out the air filters, the ones in the cab, probably just going to blow them out the engine air filter will be brand new and then once i get it washed off i'll go through and i'll grease it i'll hit all the chains with the chain lube 
and then we're going to park the combine and not worry about anything to be done with this thing for a while or at least a few weeks uh, we're about 45 days i'd guesstimate from harvest some of the crops aren't really turning turning it's more like disease pressure and uh lack of lack of moisture believe it or not we got a a light spot over there we have some disease some disease in some of our beans but i i'm not really too worried about a frost unless we get a frost like tomorrow uh, we should be all right as far as hitting black layer and we'll be good from there believe it or not for the amount of cold weather we're actually having right now we've been having i mean i'm wearing a sweatshirt um to me that's not exactly a bad thing it's not stressing the plants with it being super hot and it's allowing that grain to fill or the corn to fill and i'm really hoping it's going to be beneficial to our yields um, i think as long as we have a couple weeks two three weeks of decent harvesting conditions i think we'll get harvest done and a decent amount of time and then the goal is to at least get past harvest get our corn fodder made get all of our stocks our fall tillage done that we want done and then hopefully maybe possibly get in hydrous on at the very least if it's looking like we're not going to get all of our tillage done because i'd like to have all of our ground that we're going to chisel plow chisel before we put in hydrous on but at the very least go through in all of our bean stubble and put in hydrous down because leave the bean stubble standing, knife it in, and then disc it next spring and you're good. So, all right, I'm not complaining. It might sound like it. Some people might think I'm complaining. I'm not. I'm just telling you exactly what's going on. I'm telling you the facts. It's raining, it's wet. I thought I had 11 days of dry weather and sunshine. We don't. Uh, the stuff that I'm going was planning on going and cutting tomorrow honestly it's kind of up in the air right now because they're calling for strong storms tuesday which the stuff that i'm going to cut it's first cutting it's nice it's all grass but if we get a heavy pounding lots of rain on that stuff after it's been laid out on the ground even with that tether and i promise you this i will be dragging that tether through it I think it's still gonna struggle at throwing that hay, that grass apart, getting it up off the ground and getting the air able to penetrate down into it. Uh, the stuff that we have cut so far, I would guesstimate is right around 35, maybe 40 acres is being a little bit generous, but I cut every little waterway we have. I cut everything at, well, on the Northern side of our, of our farms that we have to cut. Everything to the North of us is done. All we have is, stuff to the south and the west of here and it really should be huh, i don't know how many bales it's going to be i only know is just, it really should be quite a bit i'm hoping to have all of our sheds full and going into the winter feeling pretty good about being able to feed our cattle throughout the winter so with that my camera is out of battery life so i'm going to go home and work in the, the 735 and i'll probably be talking to you guys tomorrow I know I will be. But. So until then, thanks for tuning in. Take care. Take it easy. Keep in touch. Wish me luck. I'll talk to you guys later.